Good Friday. And so we meet. This the darkest of days, with hearts heavy, bowed down in sorrow. And so we meet. This the darkest of days, eyes brimming with unshed tears about to be spilled. And so we meet. This the darkest of days, feet compelled to stand still. And so we meet. Our reading comes from Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 11. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. A young woman speaks. I live in Jerusalem and the feast is my favourite time of the year. Well, it was. Now it is changed forever. I used to slip away from home and mingle in the crowd. I'd happily talk to strangers, which would never happen at other times. But at the feast, rules didn't matter. And I'd smile and laugh and love every moment. But that changed forever when he came. I'd seen him arrive. I'd followed him that week and I'd even talked to some of his friends. They were a mixed group. Some didn't seem to get what was going on. Some wanted to be always next to him, but one was shifty. The women around him were amazing and welcoming. And they got it. They knew he was special. They knew things were about to change, but they didn't know how. They couldn't know how. No one could. I heard things had changed and Rome had become involved, not because of the governor, but his own. His own, and they let it go to the extreme, and I stood there. I saw and heard it all, and I could do nothing but weep and weep and weep and look as he was led away and follow the crowd and stand on the hill and watch helplessly as the Son of God would breathe his last. We continue from Matthew beginning at verse 32. As they were going out they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, 
which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down they kept watch over him there. Above his head they placed the written charge against him, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbathani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. A few thoughts. Good Friday. The darkest of days, the day when Christians come together like no other, gathering around the cross, processing through the high streets of our towns, gathering at the market cross, singing outside the town hall, but this year we can do none of those things. On this, the darkest of days, when our need of each other is the greatest, when solace is found in number, we are alone divided and apart. On this day, above all others, our witness is our presence. On this day, we care not for the stares or nervous giggles that greet our small pilgrimage. What are they in comparison to the suffering of our Lord? On this day, as we march in silence, the contrast of our solemnity against the shouts of crucify him, crucify him, could not be clearer. The only sound is the thud, thud of footsteps, marching a beat that gives a purpose to the church on the move. From Good Friday to God Friday, we acknowledge the unseen divine control which rejected the visual power of humanity. The fools who thought the script was theirs to write had they but known the words and actions were already set in stone, had they but understood that as they played the crowd, God was playing them. On this day, with the rawness of its emotion, the needless brutality angers and saddens us in equal measure. We cry, why God? Why? 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 And we know why, but still it seems too hard too brutal, too inhumane. We don't need a surgeon to explain in graphic detail what the death was like. We don't need the twisted mind of an artist to imagine what a brush with a brush, the look of abject pain. We don't need to hear the familiar words to reawaken our senses. We don't need any of this, and yet it is before us. The brutal reality goes hand in hand with the tears of Jesus' family, the shouts of anguish and the despair of Pilate as he tried to find another way. And whether we are together or apart, we have to find our way to deal with this. 
the blackness and brutality, the horror and the harshness. We are in some way apart on this day. We are one step removed. Because in order to understand what happened, we need to look at the whole picture with each nuance, each shift. We need to look and see that what happened did because God ordained it so. God was in control. Not Rome. Not the Jewish authorities. God. Always and forever God. Our prayer comes from the United Reformed Church Prayer Handbook, written by Ian Foston. Let us pray. Good Friday, God. This day acts like a magnet, drawing to its dark core all that is too hard, too grisly, too shocking to look at. All that is just too painful to hear. All that overwhelms the heart in sadness or intensity or depth of need. All from which it seems our only choice must be to turn away. And yet, when all is lost and hope has been obliterated, when there is nothing left to hold on to, there remains hope beyond our hoping, life beyond our imagining, joy confounding every expectation. Honour, glory and praise be to you, Crucified Lord Jesus. Amen. These few words ended my Good Friday reflection last year, but I say them again as we conclude worship because they seem so apt for us now. This time will pass, when the time is right. Until then, we welcome the darkness and we stay with it. For this is God Friday, and the darkness holds no fear. Amen. <laughs>